A psycho beagle terrorizes its owner and her friends. Advice on adopting an adult pet. Discover the slinky Savannah Brown. And a pet tale with a twist. Dog saves man. Right here on Animal Attractions. on a deserted island, who would you want to have along? Did you know that over 50% of pet owners say that they would choose their pet? As an animal lover, I can relate to that. I'm Megan Blake and welcome to Animal Attractions TV, the show about the deep affection people have for their pets and where we learn all kinds of interesting and amazing information about how to make your life with your pet as great as possible. First up, we've all met that adorable, energetic little puppy who's always ready to play. But what happens when he's completely grown up, is extremely rambunctious, and is embarrassingly out of control? This sounds like a job for Coach Ronald White, our pet trainer 911. Samantha Powers was a busy attorney who just wanted a loving pet to come home to. Instead, she got Quincy. I never expected to fall in love with him as much as I do. He's like my little furry child. <laughs> One of the things that I think that I love the most about getting a beagle is they have a very independent personality. They're not always on your side, but I think that's also one of the things that's most challenging about him because he will go off and do his own thing and he does not care if I am calling him or what I have to say about it unless he's interested because he is so stubborn and he doesn't aim to please. We started out with a puppy class and Quincy was a class clown, always howling and um, just creating chaos for the class itself. Um, and then we tried two other classes and part of it is I just didn't have the time to go every single week. I didn't want to be the girl with the dog that's licking everyone and jumping all over them and running off in just is complete chaos and that's kind of where he was headed. I mean he was practically giving any single person who walked through the door a tongue bath from head to toe. And it's cute, a couple of licks, but 50 to 100, not so cute, not so popular with friends, especially those that don't like dogs. And it was really coming to the point where you had to love dogs to walk through my front door. One of Quincy's favorite things to do is to get a reaction out of me. And the way he does that is he finds anything and everything he can think of to steal. not matter what it is. It can be a dustpan, it can be toilet paper. He once even stole my bathrobe. It doesn't matter what. And he just takes that and gets his little trot and he runs. And he, he's trying to get me to run after him. And I've tried not to, but he has a tendency to find what it is that will make me react where I have to go run after him. It, it's really the biggest problem that I have with him. Things are being destroyed and I spend every evening running after my dog. Probably the most embarrassing thing that Quincy does is um, my bathroom door doesn't latch completely. He breaks in and he likes to try to get into the shower with me and lick the water off my legs. And It's not that big of a deal when he breaks in on me, but I'll have guests over and dog people and non-dog people, and this dog will break in on them when they're using the restroom. Even when I've had overnight guests, he's broken in on them on the shower, and that's just a daily thing for me. And I want to be able to take him places with me, and I want to be able to rest at the end of the day, not be running after my dog all night, and so I, needed, I knew I needed help to do those things. Well, when I got the phone call, about the beagle. I couldn't get over there faster though. She told me to come to the next day. When I got there, she was waiting on the front porch for me with the list and the dog. Good, how are you? All right. She was ready to give that dog up. Uh, do you have that list? I do, here it is. Do not be fooled, he's being really calm right now. All these things, trust me, I need help. Okay, we can, 
take care of this. With his training, it's going to help him with all that. And I'm going to have him for 30 days. Okay. And then when he's ready, I'm going to bring him to you, and I'm going to train you for seven days. Okay. And each time I come to train you, when I leave, your dog leaves. So now we're seeking we train you. As much as I knew I was going to miss Quincy, I knew that the month was going to be an ice break and that I'd get a lot done during that time. Bye. So when I first brought the dog back to boot camp, I brought him here and I was playing with him for him to get to know me, just messing around with him, see what he'd do me the same way. And of course, he didn't listen to me, so he started treating me like he treat her. She was babying him a lot, picking him up, carrying him around, letting him sleep on the furniture, and she didn't have any kids but she was shaping this dog to be, to be her baby. So she didn't know how to, to give the dog discipline because she thought that she would lose the dog's love. The dog wouldn't love her anymore. But what happens if she does give her dog some structure, the dog will bond to her and respect her and listen to her. Stop, sit, sit, down. Boot camp is uh, uh, about repetition, staying consistent. Place. But when he comes to boot Place. camp, He's gonna Please. learn his commands just like he Please. knows his name. Please, stop, sit, down. So one of the big issues with the dog is jumping up on people. So the dog would jump on me, I would push down and tell him off. off. But then when he didn't jump up on me, I would pick him up and put him on me. Cause I'm gonna show him that he's not allowed off. to jump up on me. Off. And then when company comes over, he ain't gonna do them either. Cause he thinks that they're gonna do the same thing. Off. In the bathroom situation where the dog would just come in. Uh, so what I did, I took the dog to my bathroom and I made him sit outside the bathroom. Sit. Stay. While I turned the water on. And then when I went out the bathroom, he stayed right there, he followed me back up. Then I took him back to the bathroom, made him sit and stay, and I turned the water off but I made him stay outside the bathroom. And once you train that dog to where stay, he'll stay right there and wait for you to come out. He would, he would just take stuff and, and just find it all over the house. So when I train the dog here, I would take laundry and tra it. train him to where leave it. Leave it. And put things that he can get it before I can get on him. I would set him leave up it. to fail. Leave it. Leave it. As soon as leave he it. went for it, I told him to leave it. And I got on him. And it's all about his command. Leave it. She works downtown, and so I call her up, and we met on her lunch hour, and so I took the dog to show her that he had to be listening around all kind of people walking by. I didn't expect to see that much of a difference in, in such really kind of a short time, considering Down. how long I'd tried to do it myself. And then you go back to him, and you tell him to heal, and he's going to start walking. Stop, sit, down. Okay, he's going to do that for me. After I train you, he'll be doing that for you, too. A lot of people don't want to get firm with their dog until they understand the concept of the training. Place. There you go. Now tell him stop. Stop. Tell him sit. Sit. Now tell him down. 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 Yeah, don't let him lean on you. Don't let him lean on you. When I first started training with Coach, it was interesting because Coach had to teach me how to say the commands in a way that Quincy would really believe that I meant it. Heal. There you go. And you can't say it in a real nice, sweet, loving voice or the dog will think you're playing with Please. it. Now say stop. Stop. Sit. Sit. Now tell him down. 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 What Coach needed to show me how to do and also what he needed to show Quincy was that Obeying wasn't optional, this is what he had to do. Because that's the problem, because he's so smart and he picks it up so quickly, he also figures out a way to push the envelope. And if you give him any kind of leeway, that's where things go wrong. Stop. Stop. Hey! Hi, baby! Did you have fun? I was amazed at the difference. Now she has love and she has structure, and dogs want to hang with the dominant dog. And she was the dominant dog, but she was a loving dog. So you keep doing what you're doing, okay. keep training your dog. Right. You know that list I gave you of his commands. Mm -hmm. You keep using it on him. Okay. And uh, you just give me a call if you got any problem with your dog, and you did fantastic. So and it was much. nice meeting you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hey, baby, you want to play? After the training, Quincy's now the dog that I wanted him to be, and I knew he could be. I just didn't know how to make him that way. 
and other people are happy to see when I come walking with them. With so many unique cats and dogs in the world today, finding the perfect pet for your family can seem pretty mind-boggling. But today, choosing the next pet pal can be easier than ever. If you considered something new, and that's to think about adopting an adult dog or cat instead of a puppy or a kitten. We're going to show you the ins and outs and the advantages of adopting one of the more than 7 million adult dogs and cats available for you to own right now. So, what are the advantages to adopting an adult pet over a puppy or kitten? Wouldn't you love to know just how big or small your pet will be when fully grown? What about appearance? What's ugly to some is simply gorgeous to others. So why not get what you know it appeals to you? Want a pet that's good with kids? How active will it need to be? Are you hoping for one that would love to go on walks? Or a couch potato who loves nothing more than just sleeping in? When adopting an adult pet, there are no guessing games. Now I bet you're dying to ask me, where do I get this amazing adult dog or cat? First, do your homework and research on the various breeds of cats and dogs. You need to decide which breeds have the right characteristics to best fit your lifestyle. Do you want an indoor lab pet or a pet who likes to exercise with you? A hyperallergenic pet? And if you prefer cats, look into the Cornish Rex, which is hypoallergenic also. If you're ready to swim, a Labrador Retriever might be a great match for you. Lonely nights and you need someone to cuddle with? Try the Ragdoll Cat. It's known for its loving personality. With over 150 dog breeds and numerous variety of cats, there's probably more than one breed that'll fit perfectly into your home. So while searching, take the time to examine ability traits and temperaments. Do you want a companion or a loyal friend? Are you the competitive sports type or just like exercising for fun? Some breeds are made for indoor spaces while others crave the great outdoors. Another important aspect of owning a pet is grooming. Ask yourself, how much grooming time can I really spare? You can find a ton of helpful information and links on our website, AnimalAttractionsTV.com. Once you've found your favorite breed, head out to the local Humane Society or Animal Shelter. This is one of the many shelters in the U.S. working hard to find a loving home for pets. Now, as you can see, this doesn't look like your typical pound that we're all used to growing up. There's a growing trend coming along with renovating animal shelters to show off loving pets. Hi, I found this one I love. It's over there. It's the boy. Oh, he's ah. about seven. He is. Mm -hmm. ah. Do but you have any other information about him? This is his medical sheets. This shows yeah. you everything since we've had him that we've done. Make sure he's healthy right. and ready for adoption. Okay. He does have his rabies shot. Many pet rescue facilities and shelters ask for an adoption fee. These fees can range from very minimal to up to $100 or more. When looking for your new companion at your local animal shelter, remember that it can be a stressful place for any animal. Most new pets won't show their true colors until they're away from the shelter environment. So, if you see a pet that isn't vying for your attention, don't count him out. He or she may just be a little scared or lonely. Most shelters are run by volunteers, and they're there to help. They'll be able to help you match your lifestyle with the right pet. One of the wonderful things I love about the idea of adopting an adult pet is the fact that you get to know so much about them, like their health history, if they're housebroken, and how energetic they are. We know everything there is to know about Lil Gator here, practically everything that's happened to him in the past four years of his life. If you're looking for a family companion, look for a mix that includes some faithful, gentle qualities, like a Basset Hound or a Golden Retriever. Before you commit to any pet, have your vet check it out to make sure it's in good health. Your vet can also be helpful before you adopt to guide you to which breed may be good for your family. If you're looking for a specific kind of breed and your local shelter doesn't have it, then try the web. There are countless pet rescue websites all over the country that are breed specific. 
These breed-specific rescue organizations care so much about the well-being of the pet that they've been known to caravan a pet up to 600 miles to a new home. And because they foster the pets for so long, they can give you so many insights about your new pet. So now you've found your perfect match, and you're both at home feeling comfortable and safe. Spend time with your new friend by playing with him and getting to know one another. Start calling him by his new name, and even give him treats and reward him when he starts responding. It may take a little while for your new pet to adjust to you. For example, it may be as simple as just learning the same language. They may be used to hearing other commands such as place instead of stay. It's common for new owners to need a little help from a professional trainer. Hire a professional trainer early so you can learn just how to communicate your wishes in a way your pet understands. Come here. So if you and your family are looking for a pet, I really want to encourage you to adopt an adult cat or dog. There's millions and millions of adult cats and dogs out there who would love to be a part of your family. The relationship will be beyond beneficial and really rewarding for the both of you. And it will have the both of you wagging your tails and smiling. <laughs> when you think of your favorite kitty colors, I bet an array of colors come to mind. Like brilliant orange to mysterious black like Toot Sweet here. Well, I'd like to introduce you to a breed that gets its name from its luxurious, warm-colored coat, the Havana Brown. Brown doesn't always have to mean dingy and dull, particularly in the case of the Havana Brown, a unique breed of cat with a sleek, mink-like coat and a dark reddish brown. Though bred specifically for its color, the Havana Brown also has a personality as warm and inviting as its fur. The experiment was using a Siamese cat with a black American short hair cat, and that produced their first brown cats. Um, then naturally, for several generations, they bred them until they could get just brown cats. Havana Browns certainly are brown, all the way to their whiskers, with no markings or variations of any kind. They have startling oval-shaped eyes and a variety of vivid greens, making a dramatic contrast with the rich mahogany coat. There's nothing plain about this brown wrapper. The only cat that does have actually a muzzle um, and they have, their ears are rather large and they flare at the bottom and they kind of tilt forward like they're really interested in what they are doing and <laughs> for the most part they are. The Havana Brown is surprisingly heavy for its size. This is because it's extremely muscular beneath its silky outer layer. One specific health problem that we do notice in the Havana Brown seems to be in the dental or the tooth region. You are going to want to get with your veterinarian early on in your cat's life so that he or she can get you started on a preventative dental health care program so that hopefully a lot of these problems can be avoided later on in the cat's life. Havana Browns are smart, but not as snooty as many cats. They love company and crave affection, much like a dog. They love learning tricks and obeying commands, and some will even retrieve. Havana Brown owners all agree that the Brown is the best deal in town. Stinky ears are not something that you should ignore. It usually means that your pet has an ear infection. There's three main causes of ear infections, namely bacterial, yeast, or ear mites. It's best to see your veterinarian to make sure that you're on the best medication to treat that. There's several reasons why dogs can get ear infections. Some breeds are even predisposed, such as Cocker Spaniels, Basset Hounds, and Golden Retrievers. Dogs that like to swim can be prone to ear infections as well because they can get water trapped in their ears. Additionally, allergies can also be a cause of ear infections. Several ear cleaners are available from either your veterinarian or a pet store. However, usually 50-50 white vinegar and water works just as well. To clean your pet's ears, what you want to do is take the flap of the ear, lift it up, have a nice squirt bottle of either your 50-50 vinegar and water mixture or your ear cleaner, and fill up their ear canal with as much fluid as will fit in there. You can't really use too much. Once you've done that, squish at the base of the ear to get that nice squishy sound so you know that all the debris and junk that's in there is breaking up. 
Then shake. take a step back because your dog will Good shake girl. its head and all the material is going to go splattering around. It's best to do this outside or maybe in the garage where you don't mind cleaning up a little bit of a mess. After that, take a cotton ball or a tissue and just use your finger and take that and push it down, down into the canal and try to get that gunk out. You don't have to worry about hitting the yeah. eardrum because the eardrum is around the corner. The dog's ear canal is actually L-shaped, so you don't have to worry about that. Just repeat that good until your girl. cotton ball or tissue good comes girl. out clean. You, and if you want to use a Q-tip for areas of the ear that you good can girl. see, for more of the detail work, you can do that good too. Girl. Cleaning your pet's ears is a good and necessary part of your normal grooming routine, but it won't necessarily clear up an infection, and it's best to see your veterinarian. We've heard a lot of stories about people rescuing dogs, but not many about dogs rescuing people. Now, I don't mean saving people from danger. I'm talking about rescuing a person's spirit, their whole way of living. That's what this week's Pet Tale is really all about. Here, take a look. Meet Happy Girl. Go. She hasn't always been this happy. Hey. Her original owners <laughs> couldn't handle her hyperactive behavior abandoned her to the streets. Good catch, Happy! Good girl! Good. Lucky One, for Happy, two, Lawrence Frederick changed all that. Happy was in pretty bad shape. She had kennel cough and she had heartworm so bad that uh, when we took her to the vet, they thought that she was going to expire on us. And it took a double dose of the alum, which is the treatment for heartworm, in order for us to get her back to health. It took about six months. Go. So she was in pretty bad shape. Good catch, Happy! What? Actually, all of my dogs have sort of rags to riches stories, and I guess the first dog that we want to talk about is Aerodynamic. Come on, Arrow, get up. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Good girl. How are you? And Arrow is a ten and a half year old Australian Shepherd. She's a three time national champion, three time world finalist, and two different times Arrow has been the number one dog in the entire world. Right? Good girl. Okay, go ahead and get down. All right. Next, I think um, probably uh, Flash because Flash is without a doubt our most uh, entertaining and active and athletic dog on the team. And uh, our most recent rescue, who's pr predominantly one of our performers, is a dog named Harley Davidson. Seven homes in 17 months. It's an amazing story about this dog. And, and uh, to see him today after five months of training and working with him, it's, just, it's incredible to see the progress he's made. Actually, I'm, I'm a little different than most of the competitors in the world and trainers because I backed into the sport of frisbee dogs. I had a quite a, an excelled career in the human aspect of playing frisbee. A couple time world champion and touring around the world competing as a human in all the different human sports. And then um, I had a kind of a tragic accident and tore up uh, my knee pretty bad. And uh, I had toured with a guy and a dog a few years before and I said, well, let me give this a shot. And so I went out found myself a dog and, uh, and the rest history. Everybody loves to see the dogs play. And if I have any regret in my entire life is that I did not start playing with the dogs a lot sooner. I think it'd be hard for me to say that any single one of them is a favorite. Um, Arrow, I mean, you know, she's a three-time national champion. Most of the time she goes out there, dropples routines. And, and it's, she, she plays off of me and, and really makes up for the mistakes that I make out there. Happy Girl's a four-time world finalist. She is a Southeastern representative for the 2006 World Frisbee Dog Championships. And uh, Rags to Riches started out as a homeless dog on the streets and has never once, I think, met another dog or a person that she doesn't like. I think the thing about Flash is when she plays, you can see that there's nothing more in this dog's life that she loves more than playing Frisbee with me. She's the fastest and probably the most intelligent, and I think when it's all said and done with, she will be the best that I've ever played with. Harley, five, five months. The dog is without a doubt, um, probably if not the best athlete I have now, probably second best, and he's gonna be incredible. For some dog that's only played five months, he's already out there in competitions and doing shows with us. He was basically neglected, and you know, when, when you neglect them, um, you know, they go from being this kind of a dog who runs around all the time and jumps up on top of things and is always snatching everything they can get in their mouth 
it's a little difficult to have that dog live in an environment that's not conducive to those exercises, which in my house, that's a perfect dog. I think the thing that you find the most is these dogs have been on the other side of the tracks. They know how bad it is over there. And when they see what it can be like, and you know, and what I see what it can be like having these dogs in my life, it's a win-win situation for both of us. So I think that that's why I like, like having those uh, disconnected kind of dogs. All right, guys, it's time to eat breakfast. Let's go, come on, come on, come get your food, let's go. Come on, get your food. Hey, good girl, good girl. Lawrence has a real gift for taking the most unlikely dogs that nobody wants and turning them into world champs. One thing that I always try to tell people is don't ever go out and get a dog just to be a Frisbee dog. Don't get one that, well, I want one that'll be a world champion because that's not the right way to choose a dog. Always choose a canine companion as someone who will share your home with you. Because remember, you're only going to play Frisbee 10, 15, 20 minutes a day. The other 23 and a half hours plus out of the day, they're going to be your companion. Then also make sure that the dog's in proper condition. You know, they got a clean bill of health, get them to your vet. And if you're my age or older, you might want to go visit your own doctor and get a clean bill of health. And, uh, you know, just, just make sure that you feed them correctly and play in a very, very safe environment. I think that when people tell me, you know, it's really a great thing that you do about rescuing these dogs, um, I think the, the truth of the matter is, is that uh, I didn't rescue them. Yeah, they kind of rescued me. You know, pets can be a lot of work, but it's work we definitely enjoy. For more helpful information and tips or inspiring stories, log on to our website, AnimalAttractionsTV.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.